I have clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening, May 24th, 2018. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local National Weather Service office for the latest and best information for your specific area. I apologize here for the audio quality. I'm not sure why I'm struggling with it today, but I am. Uh, but anyway, this is the first video of the 2018 hurricane season kicking it off. It's a little bit early. Hurricane season doesn't officially start until June 1st, but it's not unheard of at all to have tropical disturbances in the month of May. It happens now and again, and we do have one this year. This is a messy tropical disturbance currently near the Yucatan Peninsula in the northwestern Caribbean. This will be moving northward gradually over the next few days, bringing largely rain impacts to a wide swath of the southeastern United States, and we're already seeing heavy rains over Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula over the last couple of days, and those are continuing and will continue for the next couple of days. This is still pretty disorganized. There is a circulation in here. If we take a zoomed-in look from the NASA satellite page, you can see these low-level clouds turning in here. There is a surface low that's closed somewhere north of Chetumal, inland over the Yucatan, and because it's inland, uh, thunderstorm activity is not concentrating near the center very effectively, uh, but there's also just a lot of shear out of the west uh, aloft, pushing all these thunderstorms off to the east over the northwestern Caribbean. And so this is really a pretty disorganized system for the moment, and these hostile conditions are preventing development for the moment. What's causing all the shear is this strong upper trough that we can see on water vapor satellite here, uh, digging into the Gulf of Mexico. You see, you can see all this strong flow from west to east across the Yucatan, shearing the system. But things may change a little bit over the next couple of days. This ridge over the southwest U.S. is amplifying over time here. So uh, the subtropical jet currently over the northern part of Mexico is going to incrementally shift north into the states over the next few days. And as it does so, uh, this amplifying ridge will cause this trough to also amplify and perhaps tilt a little bit more toward the negative direction. By that, I mean it might tilt from its current configuration, southwest to northeast, to a more southeast to northwest configuration. And when that happens, the direction of the upper level flow over the system will change and perhaps become more out of the south instead of out of the west. And that would be more aligned with the low level flow and that would reduce the wind shear. And so this may allow conditions to become more favorable for development as we head through the weekend. We can see this happen on the GFS, for example. The 200 millibar wind field valid this afternoon here on the GFS shows this trough here. There's that flow we saw on water vapor satellite. Our disturbance, dubbed Invest 90L, uh, is here. And as we go out to Friday, we see this trough start to amplify aloft. Our system would be near the Yucatan Channel at this time. You can see the ridge building over Texas. On Saturday, this ridge continues building northward over Oklahoma now, and our trough has really started to tilt over southeast to northwest, and you can see the upper level flow has shifted from out of the west to now more out of the south here on the side of the trough. There's our surface low beginning to strengthen, and uh, the reason it's strengthening at first here is probably not actually due to tropical processes so much as it is due to this upper trough, kind of a non-tropical bear clinic process here. So this is likely to look uh, more like a subtropical storm, and as it forms, which it's likely to, the National Hurricane Center gives it a 90% chance over the next five days, uh, it is uh, likely to attain the name Alberto, but it's probably going to be subtropical to start off uh, because of its intimate interaction with the upper level trough to its northwest. It won't matter too much in terms of impacts because lots of rain is expected regardless of what the system is technically called, but it will likely be subtropical to start off, and then as it comes north, it may have a chance to become fully tropical uh, as we go out to Sunday here. We can see this upper low cuts off on the GFS, and our, uh, our system, what would be Alberto here on the model, is nearing the Gulf Coast with lighter upper-level winds, which may eventually allow convection to develop closer to the center and turn this into a bona fide tropical cyclone. And the only difference I would really make is that there might be some stronger winds near the center of the system, and so localized wind impacts may become possible if this is allowed to strengthen that much. But it's, it's a little unclear yet whether that will happen, uh, given its current disorganized and broad state. We need to see what happens when it gets out over the water in the Gulf and see what it looks like uh, on Saturday, Saturday night, uh, before we really know whether it's going to strengthen a lot on its way toward the coast. But what we do know for sure is it's bringing a lot of moisture up with it. You can see all this moisture uh, laden on the east side. This will start coming up into the Florida Peninsula as early as Saturday, and the thinking is that this will likely start overspreading most of the northeast Gulf Coast by the time we get to Sunday. And then Sunday and Monday, this is really going to start ramping up the rainfall in here. 
uh, and uh, this system will be pretty slow coming up. You can see on the GFS that uh, this is, you know, Sunday afternoon it's making it to the coast and then it may spend a few days in this area before leaving. And so lots of rain may fall and that's the primary concern here with this moisture that we can see on the GFS in green showing up, getting pumped up on the eastern side of the system and then eventually getting wrapped around also to the west side of the system as it strengthens. And so rain on all sides will happen and uh, it's over a large area. You can see most of the southeastern U.S. will likely see strong tropical moisture and the potential for heavy rains over the next few days. Uh, regardless of exactly where the system tracks, this particular model has it coming up in here near Mobile. Uh, but a track could occur, you know, technically anywhere from eastern Louisiana to the Florida Panhandle. Somewhere in here is where we expect the storm to track. Uh, but regardless of the exact track, rain will occur over this whole area anyway. And so that's the primary concern, regardless of the details of how strong the system is or exactly where the center goes, large area of rain anyway. And we can see that on the WPC rainfall forecast showing a large swath of several inches plus over the next five days and local totals could easily exceed the rainfall amounts shown here. Some NWS offices are advertising more than a foot of rain possible in places like uh, Mobile and southern Alabama uh, as uh, time goes on over the next few days. So flooding is a concern, inland flooding, river flooding, uh, flash flooding, uh, due to the already soaked ground, we've had a lot of rain in the last week or so here, and this is adding on to that. So you're more prone to flooding when you've already had a lot of rain before. And uh, rivers uh, may start to rise above flood levels uh, rather quickly after this weekend. And uh, rain again could continue for days here, and so flooding is the primary concern. And uh, there could be some high surf and perhaps light storm surge as winds come out of the south, depending really on how strong the storm gets, uh, but there could be coastal flooding as well, depending on the details there. Uh, so as we continue to watch this system uh, disorganized for now, conditions will become a little more favorable over time as it comes up again. Could strengthen a bit. It uh, really will depend on how much drier entrainment there is and uh, how much the shear really does lighten. And we need to see it a little bit more probably before we have a good idea. We need to watch it get in here on Saturday and Sunday before we'll really know uh, how strong it will get. But regardless, lots of rain is coming and uh, the potential for flooding is the primary concern here from the National Weather Service for the southeastern United States and flooding is also a concern for Cuba and the Yucatan as rains continue over the next couple of days. Could become fully tropical before landfall in which case there would be the chance for localized wind impacts due to tropical storm force winds over 40 miles per hour close to the storm center as it nears landfall somewhere along the north central or northeastern Gulf Coast. Again, details a little spotty uh, while the system is still ill-defined. As it develops this weekend, we will likely know a lot more, and the National Hurricane Center will have official forecasts for us by that time. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.